Uh, great. It was really nice uh, session from the Yusuf. We have another power pack session from John, who is the product owner at the Gravity. And he's talk about the secure apps and APIs with strong authentication and adaptive access. So John, welcome to the stage. Stage is all yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is John Graham. I'm a product owner for API security and alerting at Gravity. A full a solutions company offering full API lifecycle management together with access management. And I'm really happy to be here and joining you all at API Days in Dubai. Uh, I'm going to share with you some insights into how to manage API security for open banking. And more closely, we're going to look into how to offer and customize different types of authentication methods to your customers using an access management solution. Before we get into the topic, I thought I'd share a quote with you regarding API security to highlight the importance of properly securing your open banking APIs and ultimately your business. It shows that in 2021, 95% of companies were affected by API security incidents. Uh, now, that's a very high number, but it's also expected given how important APIs are today. What's really worrying, though, is that 34% of these organizations also lack an overall API security strategy. So this means businesses and people's data integrity might be at risk without proper API security governance. So the question is, how can these security issues be addressed while still keeping the user experience at high level? And how does it affect open banking? So open banking has many sides to it. It's a set of technologies. It's in some parts of the world, a bank regulation, but more importantly, it's a global movement to open up financial data finding new streams of business and allowing customers to take control of their financial situation. Around 2008, uh, this concept was, however, expectedly very immature in its security nature. So innovative fintech companies found business areas and needed to access the customer's financial data the same way as the customer would. But of course, due to limited technologies, the results were credential sharing and screen scraping meaning customers needed to share their passwords to banking services in order to use the fintech solutions. And this also, of course, caused problems within the banks and the fintechs, since the banks could be unaware of the fintech solution. And this, together with limitations in technologies, caused unreliable services that could easily break. Then, of course, grew the movement around open banking to find a way to offer access to customers' financial data in an agreed, secure, and reliable service interface. Uh, and this, uh, the parties involved in open banking are, of course, naturally the bank or the account servicing payment service provider with its core IT system, uh, the consumer as the data subject or the payment service user, and finally, of course, the third party providers. And what fuels good open banking is the APIs exposed by the banks, allowing fintechs to develop solutions. This ecosystem needs to rely on open standards for APIs, as well as the authentication and authorization of both consumers and third-party providers calling the read and payment APIs so that they can be authorized to interact with consumers' financial data with the consent. To achieve this, uh, we need to securely authenticate consumers, collect consent when making transactions, securely authenticate third-party providers, and of course, manage threat protection and rate limit policies. So let's look into how authentication and authorization is best implemented. To securely manage identities and access across your ecosystem, you need to centralize this with an access management solution, relying on open standards when identifying users and fetching data through APIs. The technology protocol used to securely authorize and authenticate users is OAuth2 with the identity layer OpenID Connect. And this allows you to challenge users with well-known authentication methods, just as you can access, use your Google or Facebook account to access services. And then pass on the user delegation to let apps call APIs on behalf of the users, passing along signed OAuth tokens containing delegation rights and user attributes. The OpenID Foundation has also developed an industry-led common security profile for financial services called the Financial Grade API, or FAPI. Using these solutions give you a lot of benefits, such as confidence, because there's no passing of passwords since the authentication is done in the access management system. 
you're getting customer retention and inclusiveness. Having multiple accounts and password is a problem for users. Some might not go through a process of resetting the password if it's forgotten. This means you are missing out on business. By centralizing the access management, you have full control over which authentication method you present to the user, which also gives you inclusiveness to offer well-known methods the customer is familiar with. One area where this is well implemented is within the European Union and the Electronic Identification, Authentication and Trust Services or the EIDAS regulation. With this, public sector authorities or financial institutions under the PSD uh, can comply with the identity federation. So this means that organizations will be able to present national identity methods for login and signature from European countries making it easier and safer to onboard new users and new services across the EU, regardless of your nationality. You also get reduced ID cost because communication between user, application, and the API relies on standard protocol. You don't have to go through the process of redesigning your IT environment if you want to introduce a new authentication method. It's also less prone to errors, money more likely to go to the right place because the customer doesn't have to supply card number nor reference number for invoices. OF2 also has built-in support for consent, making sure the consumer is well aware of their decisions and that the action can be traced back irrevocably. So by establishing your identity and access management solution, you get full control over who can access your apps and APIs and what they're able to do. Another value is that you can prompt users with strong authentication methods when needed, such as for a payment. So modern strong customer authentication methods are more commonly known in the access management world as MFA. And MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. So if you're hearing these concepts, they are interchangeable. And the purpose of MFA is to be confident in the user's identity and remove the risk of lost passwords. It is said that MFA can block over 99.9% .9 of account compromise attacks. And MFA works in a way that it adds an additional factor to the authentication process. And it should be based on two of the following elements, knowledge, possession, and inheritance. So knowledge refers to something the user knows, like a password or a PIN. Possession is something they own, like a USB security key or a mobile device. And finally, inheritance, indicates something that they are using fingerprint or facial recognition for biometric authentication. One technology which is becoming an industry standard when it comes to strong authentication on the web is Fido2 or WebAuthn, a browser API which lets the user choose the device that fits them best, such as a YubiKey or facial recognition in your mobile device. However, MFA requires extra steps to authenticate with which may affect the customer convenience. And all data might not be sensitive and need MFA for protection. And this brings us to capabilities to, for adaptive access. So adaptive access lets you tailor your authentication flow in the access management solution, prompting additional factors only when needed. And common flows is uh, adaptive MFA, step up authentication and remember device. So the first one, Adaptive MFA, takes users' contextual information into consideration and prompts MFA if the confidence about the user's identity is low, such as the number of login attempts successfully, provide, uh, successfully providing correct password. Step-up authentication can allow the user to access the app with less secure authentication method, but prompt MFA if a static rule apply, such as user initiating a payment. And remember device lets the user remember the device in the access management solution as a trusted device. It's for user convenience to not have to provide multi-factor authentication every time they're logging into the service. All of these policies can be used together. So it's very important to understand the order which the policies are executed when you're designing your MFA flows in your access management solution. So if we're looking a little bit closer to the step up authentication, uh, we can imagine that we have an app which give access to two different APIs. We have the balance API and we have the payment API. To give you a simple overview, the user could at first log in with the username and password for convenience. This could mean that the user can only access the balance API. If the user wants to make a payment, the app would need to trigger a step up authentication 
request to the access management server. And once the user has been challenged with the multi-factor authentication, the app will get a callback with a new valid token with elevated privileges that can be used to access the payment API. And the building blocks for step of authentication are all available in OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect. So it leveraged the OAuth scopes, which is a mechanism of instructing the access management system about the current context and how to proceed with the authentication and attributes provided in the ID token about the user. So if the user wants to perform a payment, the app would typically send payment as a scope when redirecting the user for authentication. And claims is the attributes, values, and keys in the ID token, such as identifier about the user, uh, first name, surname, or the user's permission. The claims are being used to understand the authentication methods and are commonly authentication context reference and authentication method reference. So these are the, the values, the keys in the ID token that tells which method the user has logged into. And ACR value could be the following. And this one is verifying to the app that the user was authenticated using a multi-factor authentication uh, method. And AMR value could be an array showing the methods the user provided for authentication. So in this example, it is password and it's also biometric fingerprints that has been supplied from the user. So let's have a quick demo to see how it looks for the user in a typical payment context. So here is a test bank app uh, where a user is currently initiating a login flow. Uh, so the user is redirected to the access management solution to authenticate using username and password. And once the user has logged in, it is passed back to the app with a valid OAuth token, telling that this user was authenticated using password. The user now wants to make a payment. So it goes to the payment section of this app. It adds the details about the payment, the amounts being transferred, and also the message for the, for the payment. And the user is once again redirected to the access management solution because right now it's trying to call the payment API. So the user provides multi-factor authentication. Here it is fingerprint biometric using Fido2. And once the user has properly supplied its fingerprint, it also consents to the payments, making sure that we have a consent about the payments and the money being transferred. And now the payment process is done. No passwords were used uh, in the app in the past, and no car details or reference numbers were needed, just the authentication using OAuth and OpenID Connect. Uh, so the question is now, what lays ahead in the future of API security in the ever-increasing global world of APIs? So traditional app and API security has its shortcomings. It relies heavily on authentication, authorization, and applying rate limits and throttling in an API gateway. But the malicious attackers are far, far more elaborate than just generic policies, not the least policies that only ends out in a binary decision. And this together with an API gateway, typically not equipped with enough compute to do real-time analysis of API consumers, requires for something more. So the future around API security is intelligent API security, and it's focusing on real-time analysis of both users and API consumer behavior. So it's using machine learning to ingest logs from your API ecosystem and map out common behavior patterns and finding deviations and anomalies. Because the normal pattern for one API consumer might be considered malicious for another. So you need to have granular intelligent API security to find the threats before you're actually having a cyber attack. Uh, at Gravity, we are continuously looking into how to evolve within API security to seamlessly integrate it across your API ecosystem. Uh, so we're going to look into what the Gravity platform looks like. So Gravity offers a rich open source platform with both API management and access management free to start using and fully financial grade API certified. 
open source and full of potential, just like open banking. Uh, if you want to enhance your API governance, Gravity extends and offers capabilities within alerting, security overviews, API designs, so that you can design your open banking APIs in an effective collaborative tool, making sure you design sustainable APIs that can be reused across your third-party providers and across your internal APIs and apps. In our modular architecture, we also offer a marketplace with plugins to make sure you can browse and find plugins fitting to your industry and needs. And for full API governance, Gravity comes top with Cockpit. It's an overview tool that lets you get a full view of your Gravity installations across regions and business areas. For open banking, UK FinTech Tide is using Gravity API platform for full API lifecycle management and security by using access management with FIDO2 and biometric authentication. Full support for open banking is one of the many reasons Tide chose Gravity as a platform to base their open banking upon. And Gravity is keen on keeping on supporting both third-party providers and banks in their open banking journey. So to sum it up and offer you some advice, if you're a bank in a non-regulated market, don't wait for open banking to be regulated. See it as a new product and a new revenue channel. The risk of having open banking as a compliance project is that you're missing out on the possibilities and only see it as a cumbersome post cost. Build your open banking success on open standards and look at excellent open profiles already in place around the globe for both security and user experience. Make sure you protect your services accordingly and invest in an access management solution. It will help your business even outside the scope of open banking. And finally, contribute and let the open banking movement thrive. Not everyone has control over their financial situation. Let us have the goal of creating one unified open banking API across the globe. And I thought I'd end on a note from a great economist showing that open banking will not emerge effortlessly and that we need to embrace the possibilities ahead. So contribute and help open banking be even better. Uh, so with that said, please visit Gravity's virtual booth or simply reach out on other channels. Uh, we have a strong community platform as well, uh, given that we're open source. Uh, we have lots of information and users sharing their Gravity story. Uh, I welcome you to join in, sign up, uh, ask questions, and find topics that suit you. So thanks a lot for listening, and I hope to see you around. Yeah. Hey, John. Uh, thank you very much for sharing about the about the uh, open banking and the access management here. And uh, audience, please, if you have any question, John will be right over here on the Gravity community. Please feel free to join the community. Ask your question to John or anybody else from the community.